Thank you so much, Cynthia, Kiko, and Jonathan. Uh, we're going to the uh, last part of the before the break. Um, I have about half an hour, and as soon as I get to my PowerPoint presentation, which we are there, um, the um, study that you see a copy of that on your table, um, I just put one copy because uh, we're still going to um, do something a little nicer with that so we easier on eyes because there are about 57, 58 uh, figures and numbers and other things. Uh, so let me start, my, go to the research. It's been going on for the last three months. And le before I start, let me just tell you what the basic premise of this research is. There are a lot of uh, misconceptions, there are a lot of myths about you know, what undocumented immigrants bring or don't bring. I wanted to uh, do this research to um, provide verifiable information that separate our conception from reality. And you'd be quite surprised to see that you know, there is a huge difference between the two. So with that, let me, basically what the, you see here, uh, the breakdown of the research, I'm gonna talk about the, um, a little bit about the research design, not a lot, because it will confuse many, and we don't have time for it, but you can read extensively in the report uh, how the uh, method was used and employed. I'm going to um, look at the uh, socioeconomic um, structure information about uh, undocumented immigrants, and I think there you would probably can see how the uh, uh, misconceptions really prevail in, in our uh, communities. Then I'm going to look at what is called economic impact. I'm very lucky that to be able to do this kind of research because these kind of data was not available when I was, uh, uh, when I did this, some very good friends uh, asked me that, what did you get the information about? Isn't it true that undocumented immigrants do not speak to uh, anybody about that? I said, but uh, the, the, uh, the magic of the census is that uh, when the information arrives, first of all, it's mandatory to fill it out, and secondly, nobody knows. And there is no question about your status if you are undocumented or non-undocumented. But the other thing is, you know, a lot of this data was not possible without the advancement in data science and other work that's been done in uh, recent years. So with that, let's go to the, um, okay, I think I'd better if I see it from my screen rather than trying to sneak from there, okay? So uh, I can also speak close to the mic so you guys can hear me. So here are some of the uh, socioeconomic data. Uh, there's a bit of demographics and then socioeconomic. I kind of mix them. In the research, you can see that they are separated and talked about differently. So how many of them are uh, in Ventura County and in Santa Barbara? By the way, this study is not just about Ventura County. It's about Santa Barbara. What well, we call you know, a major part of the central coast of California, two major counties. So if you look at the data, these data, most of them are, in this data, most of them come from Migration uh, Policy Institute, MPI, wonderful organization that made this possible. And a lot of them, when it goes to the economic assessment, economic impact assessment, comes from USC, from uh, uh, Professor Manuel Pastor, which is really a leading figure on these things, you know, and, um, uh, and I really always uh, have a great admire, you know, uh, respect for, for, for Manuel. So, these are the demographics. About 60,000 uh, live in Ventura County and about 44,000 in Santa Barbara. So what is that red part? Red part is that in the information you get that about 23,000 live with at least one uh, US born uh, children. And children, by the way, are defined under 18 years of age. So uh, that's a different, that's important to bear in mind. And then, um, so I said, okay, let's just use one, which in reality is more than one. So I just added that one to the 60, added that 17, 640 to the 44,000. And this is an underestimation of the number of people that live with undocumented families. That's the understanding of it. So if you put it together, that really comes to be almost 12% of the um, uh, people who actually live in Santa Barbara and in Ventura County. So let's go further. So the next one is the parental status, uh, status of the undocumented population in Ventura County. Uh, if you look at that, you see that you know, um, 
that's really interesting because um, the enrollment I looked at, uh, because when you look at a particular community, you really want to see how things will develop. It's an opportunity for development, and you miss it, then you've missed it uh, in that period. So you see the first one is 3 to 17 years of age, and the other one is 18 to 24. There are significance about this age break. 3 to 17 are um, preschooling and also um, going to uh, uh, elementary and secondary school mostly. And 18 to 24 are the um, kind of uh, people who go to colleges, okay? So the first one, I mean, if you put this data, take the percentages, you don't see it here, we have somewhere about uh, 13, 14% who really are not in that age of 3 to 17. Some of them are in preschooling, but bulk of them are in other uh, parts. I would imagine that uh, going to a school be mandatory is probably, you know, kind of drop out, you know, did not finish high school would be that. The other category, 18 to 24, is uh, obviously uh, the age of going to college and, and uh, going to um, the community colleges, going to universities. And the numbers are pretty uh, large, you know, the ones that are not going yet, are not going there. All right, let's move on. Um, health insurance. When Jonathan was talking about earlier on, um, and um, so if you look at right here, well, 57% of undocumented immigrants in both counties, funnily enough, I thought even the number was wrong, I calculated three times. It's 57% do not have um, health insurance. So I thought, oh, well, let's make it a little starker. Let's look at it, you know, what proportion of people who do not have insurance in Santa Barbara, in Ventura County, form from undocumented immigrant? And the answer is 46 and 57. So essentially, put it this way, overwhelming majority of people who don't have health insurance are undocumented immigrants. Then, we're just coming out of COVID. We haven't come out yet. And you see how idiotic that, you know, policy is that people cannot have universal health care or insurance. You know, so, so you can see that. You know, how what, so the, the impact is really far more than you can possibly imagine. And I'm glad to see that the state of California uh, is changing that policy. I hope that we see that throughout the United States. So educational attainment. Here is another one. If you make a comparison, the two charts make it a little faster so I can get you know, to the economic impact soon. So the first one that you see on your left hand side, it tells you about you know, the percentage of those who are in that level of educational attainment. And by the way, educational attainment is education for population of 25 years and older. So I checked the numbers and they're pretty accurate. So you have about 9% of undocumented immigrants who do have bachelor and graduate and professional degree. You have something about 20% that have some colleges, and you have 39% that have high school diploma or higher. Sure enough, if you make a comparison with what is the, uh, you know, the percentage is countywide, educational attainment is lower. But the fact that you think that most of the undocumented immigrants or overwhelming majority of them don't have high school is totally wrong, okay? So you can see these are the numbers that give you what Akiko, I think, said about putting human face, I think is very important for us to really have in mind, put a human face on everything that's around. I think economics is all of it is putting human face on reality of our life. So let's go further about English proficiency. We have enormous amount of what is called social isolation. And one of the leading factors of social isolation is inability to speak and uh, uh, read English. And that is very important. So you can see that we have a very high percentage of undocumented immigrants. And you saw in some of the questions, I think it was either Akiko or Cynthia were reading from the questionnaire that when I came here, I didn't really know anything, you know, and then I kind of learned, it took me a long time. So what does it mean to be isolated? It means you cannot have access to what every human being is entitled. It means cast aside. It means disenfranchised. It means isolated. It means all the above that can come. So you can this is stuff. And then again, language speaking at home, overwhelming majority is Spanish. So let's go into the labor market. On the labor market, I think if you had the age structure, remember, sorry I'm going fast, but I have to do it, I'm trying to make it in half an hour, okay? So you can get to the next break. 
So if you look at this, the undocumented immigrant, put it succinctly, younger, participate in the labor market more, work very hard, and by the way, often that's the case with, with the disenfranchised population, that they do actually go to labor market because that's the only way for them to survive. That's number one. So another myth, they kind of, you know, get, you know, you know the, or live off our uh, handout or something. That's nothing true at all. That's all about it. So if you look at that, the, the one side, on the left-hand side, you make a comparison that um, you look at the undocumented in the labor market of the county. And the second one is even better, because second one show you, for example, the first one. Let me show that. Total population in Ventura County. So if you look at the in labor force, employed and unemployed, then compare it, for example, with the, the undocumented in Ventura County, 74.1%. In, in labor force. Employed 7.7, and by the way, the unemployment rate here, strangely enough, is not really that high because we really are living through some of the difficulties that, although this data goes before uh, COVID, but in general, usually is the case. Labor force participation are higher, employed, unemployment higher too, because they do have, you know, that kind of possibility of not getting um, a job easily. This one is we're going now to the area where we are looking at the economic impact. So the first one is Ventura, second one, Santa Barbara, and then the third graph is what proportion of these industries are undocumented. So pay attention to the last one. 70% of farm workers, people who work in agriculture are undocumented in Ventura County. 80% in Santa Barbara. And by the way, I do have a little bit of a problem, I have to say that. I put a lot of end notes usually in my studies, so you can see it there. That 70% is because in census, when you take the industry, mining is combined with agriculture. I don't know why they do it that way, but that's what it is. So if you really want to filter it out of the mining and others, it's even higher than that in both countries. But construction, quite significant. You look at retail trade, look at manufacturing, look at other services. Now, this data actually came, I use it from USC. Why? They are a little bit underreported the number of employed, but they had a good breakdown on nine industries. Okay, so I have to tell you a little more about that, how you went about it. Um, we use Implant. Implant is a software that allows you to e measure economic impact. And <clears throat> in Implan, when you run your model, you get three impacts, direct impacts. Means that these many people work in agriculture and that's how much is produced. That's direct effect. Then you go to what is called indirect effects. Indirect effects is that when that industry is working, there are economic interactions between other industries, between businesses. So that's another layer of impact. Then you go to the induced. Induced is as a result of activity, earning income, spending, you get another layer of impact. So what I do, what I've really done in writing rather than in graphs, I added the indirect and the induced together and I showed, I have one final thing, you know, later on, I'm gonna show you, watching myself not to really go over time. Uh, so if you look at that, I put the induced and indirect is what every job of undocumented immigrant creates in the county. What production that comes from one generates in addition in the county. What amount of taxes they generate. So we can see it in those lights, and those can probably convince us what is the benefit of undocumented immigrants for others? Not for themselves, for others. So you, you put that, that to me is the degree of interdependence. I'll repeat again, degree of interdependence. We in every society live as interdependent human beings. We are like bees, you know, like ants. We live upon each other, we interact with each other. There is no one which is an island into herself or himself. There is nothing like that. 
It's a misconception. Put it aside, that's not true. Okay, so this is what I wanted to show with figures rather than words, okay, although I do bring words off also. Okay, let's go to the economic impact. Four things I looked at. By the way, I've got more than that I could share, but the four things I worked at is output, labor income, employment, and tax revenue, okay? So these four. And then I kind of reported on each again in the manner that I explained. Let me go a little further. I had to take out of 546 industries, I had to dissect nine industries, which means I had to do a level of aggregation and in order to do that, you have to have a way of filtering. For example, somebody says that, are anybody of undocumented working in Amgen? I don't know, maybe they are. But I had to do what? I had to do something which is not be considered an exaggeration, okay? So I'll repeat again, overestimating, exaggeration. Because when you do that, you really kill your work. You know, it's, oh, it's all exaggerated. Oh, you know, they can be making up that. So you, you heard Gerhard earlier on, you know, what they talk about. Uh, you know, that, that, that article that came out. So I had to be what absolutely conservative about it. Conservative means that take the industry that you can say that I use an underestimation. What are underestimation? I took educational attainment at one. I already set it very low for those industries. I also took what? Median income, okay? So I couldn't really resist not to report this chart in the bottom of that uh, slide that you see. So I took the median income, because the median income usually says that these are the 50% lower income earners, okay? And I took that and I, based on that, I calculated annual income for the industry, and then we filtered everything, uh, you know, in all these 546 to pick up those that live up to those kind of lower salaries. However, however, if you look at the median income in Ventura County, look at the 2019. Median income for migrants is $17. For non-migrants, the rest is about 27. This is called wage gap, wage gap. This means people do not earn for the same work, the same income, okay? That is what is, by the way, you know what the, one of the biggest wage gap is? Gender wage gap. That's my next target to calculate something in Ventura County later on. That how much is denied? So when you deny that, you misrepresent even GDP. You miscalculate GDP because you do not value work of undocumented or women or African American the same as we do others. So our calculations are wrong. Anyway, so I had to put that. Now let's go look at the quickly on the impact. The first one is regional output, okay? If you look at the regional output, on the left you see Ventura, on the right you see, correct, yeah, on the right you see Santa Barbara. Why is this? Let me put it bluntly. $5.4 billion are generated because of the work of undocumented immigrants in Ventura County, direct. Then you add the other two. I'm not gonna add them now because I have one complete at the end. That's called indirect. Percentages, you can add them together. So on the same in Santa Barbara. So when we say that, if you ever imagine, anybody would say in mind, imagine that Ventura County, California, United States, can go economically in where we are now without un undocumented un immigrants, that's insanity. It's not really a proposition. It's insanity. It's impossible you know, that to do that. The next one, you see employment effect. Oh, that, that one I have to really, a little pause on that. If you look at the employment effect, so 38,239 are the people who actually are undocumented and working in those nine industries that I talked about. But add the other two. The other two that you add them comes to be um, the extra work, extra employment generated because of the work of the undocumented immigrant. You see it later on that every undocumented immigrant generates point four of additional work, okay? And then I added them up. You know, I, I don't spoil you know, the fun for later on. So I'll get to that, you know, later. So this is the evidence of interdependence I'm talking about. Let's move on. Tax. So what do we hear about tax? Oh, I'm talking about immigrant, you know, you know, spending our tax money, we're feeding them and that kind of stuff. Absolutely the other way around. It's not true at all. So when you talk about tax, tax is generated from a variety of areas. Tax is generated from production. 
taxes joined the indirect tax. There are so many. In fact, the new implant, and my friend, you know, Kirk Lesh is at the end because he works on this kind of model too. If you look at that, the new implant is fantastic because it breaks down the tax to the county level, to the state level, to everything else. And it was very fun to work with the new model. So generally speaking, we generate hundreds of millions of dollars in various form of tax because of the work of undocumented immigrants. Hundreds of millions, okay? So we'll come to that calculation later on. A statewide impact. Let me tell you why a statewide impact you see is higher than county. Impact is like this. You have a pond here, you drop a stone. We hit the, the uh, water, start generating waves, okay? The bigger the pond, the further the wave travels. That's why usually, under space circumstances, the other way around, you get county impact bigger than, uh, sorry, state impact bigger than county. So you see that, and I thought that, you know, living in California, we have to really to bring the, the state also into this picture. So these are what is generated uh, statewide. 6.5 billion, or 6.6 .6 actually, if you round it, generated statewide. Same in Santa Barbara, then you can move on from there, go to the employment, and you have a copy of it on your desk for everybody. So I can go a little faster on that, okay? I think I'll do. So employment, then we have tax impact. Again, breakdown for Ventura and Santa Barbara within the state of California. That's the term to add, the bigger fund, okay? And this is the summary. The summary of this is here. Okay, let me just go on the total. If you look at the total, the Ventura County is 8.2, 8.3 billion in terms of um, regional output. If you go on employment, 54,280, which is 38, 239 direct, 16,000. 41 indirect and induced together, which means those 16,000 plus are not undocumented immigrants necessarily. This is the interdependence I was talking about. This is the how we interrelate to each other. So we create, they create 16,000 more jobs, okay? So you go the same thing for the uh, Santa Barbara. So in Santa Barbara we get, um, yeah, but 11,000, almost 12,000 extra jobs created because of their work. Tax revenue is impressive, right? Look at that. $1.4 billion for um, Ventura County. You know, don't translate it as, this is how much they pay tax, no. This is how their work create through economic interactions, okay? The two different things. Yeah, they do pay some of it themselves too. And by the way, Undocumented immigrants, like everybody else, pay social security, they never get it back. So you want to see, you know, who is paying who? That will tell us a little more about it. So you can go on on that and look at the region, and then I put them together. By the way, I didn't run them together because it would create some technical problem. I did them separately and then kind of summed them up. So I want to make uh, recommendations. In the report, by the way, I've not yet in half an hour, I've got three minutes. So, um, so, so if you look at the, uh, the suggestions, recommendations, I make three levels of the recommendations in the report. State, nation, and county. Here I'm just gonna talk about county because the state and nations are good. County is us here. So here are my recommendations. I wanna go through each one of them. Create a county-wide regional forum this is stuff, it's like today we're here, this kind of stuff, organized. I give an example, I see Vanessa Baxter and my friends from ECCF, others here. So if you look at that, they're doing this for Isabella Project. What is Isabella Projects? Isabella Projects about early childhood education in Santa Paula. And when they're working on that, they're not working in silos. They're trying to bring everybody on the table, okay? So this is where the things are. We have to bring this out in the community, discuss them. 
have discussion together. And then going protecting lives of undocumented. Yes, sanctuary counties, what's wrong with that? We have 20 in the state of California. LA is one of them. They should consider it, why not? Consider becoming sanctuary county in here and in Santa Barbara. That's a very concrete proposition that we can discuss and talk about. Bring attention to providing resources assisting undocumented immigrants to benefit, <laughs> benefit from existing provision. You know what entitlement is? Entitlement means tested is a battle between something which is supposedly exists but very few get. Now I saw that in the paper I just recently had published, you know, that in the state of California, early childhood, we got a lot. Nobody gets it. It's written that you can get it. If your, if your, if your family income is 331% average, we calculated, you're entitled to early childhood, you know, um, provisions by state. Who's getting it? You know what 331,000% uh, of family income is? It's six figures. You're not getting it. Universal. Universal is the good one. You don't have to prove it. You pay tax for it, or others who should pay tax, and then you have it for everybody. Helping underserved community to help themselves, this means empowering. Empowerment is a very important thing in social change. Make supporting the existing DACA recipient a priority in every organization, college, university, consider it as an essential element of DEIJ, which Leanne was talking about earlier, you know, well, how Ventura, how uh, California Lutheran University focus and things are. This is important, bring it there, it's real. So, yeah, so I put that in bold, you know, talk about the issue of remote. Bring a much higher level of assistance from the nonprofit sectors. Our nonprofit sectors are wonderful there. Help us, assist us, bring them to the purview, focus of this, and increase legal aid to undocumented immigrants, okay? So these are my suggestions, these are my proposals, and quite honestly, I finished three minutes under my time. Thank you so much. Thank you. Now we can have a nice break, okay? So we're gonna uh, resume in 15 minutes, thank you.